You know, uh, I want to move on and, and talk a little bit about your fiction and, and to begin with Aurora 7, but you, you mentioned uh, your friendship with Scott Carpenter. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, within the context of uh, Tom Wolfe's book, The Right Stuff, which I hadn't read in even more years than, than anything else. I recall, though, in the movie that, that Scott Carpenter was kind of given short shrift in the movie because yeah. it, it focused more on Shepard and Glenn, right. um, mostly Glenn. Um, but do you want to talk a little bit about your relationship with Scott Carpenter? Whom I consider it a privilege to meet when when you and he visited here, but you know him far be- or you knew him far better than than yeah. I did. Yeah, I, I um, I, I mean, there were two things when I was growing up. Uh, somebody asked me what were the influ- the, the main influences on you growing up that may have turned you into a writer. And I said, the two biggest influences on me were without question, the Baltimore Catechism and Project Mercury. Uh, and they, they were related in a way because the, the catechism was all about uh, what was above you and uh, how to get to heaven. And um, Project Mercury was about taking the first steps literally uh, toward a kind of heaven. So I, um, uh, I knew all, you know, uh, of the seven astronauts, uh, not just by name, I knew their biographies, I knew everything. And Carpenter was, um, uh, you know, uh, to me, a, a great hero. They, he was the most, he was, he was the handsomest of the seven. His mm-hmm. wife, Reen, was the most beautiful of uh, the astronaut wives. Uh, and uh, they were real glamour figures. And the flight was very perilous. On May 24, 1962, he very nearly didn't make it back. Uh, His retro rockets were uh, punched uh, a little bit off time. He landed 250 miles long. He was basically lost, as far as the public knew, for nearly an hour. NASA did know that uh, he had gotten through uh, and landed safely because they had a heartbeat telemetry that was coming through, but the public didn't know that. And Walter Cronkite said it was the uh, first real big public relations failure of the space program. But it was an immensely, immensely suspenseful uh, flight. And um, I realized I wanted to write about my childhood uh, in that novel. And I realized that that was the flight to pick. That was the day I was gonna uh, set the book. And um, and the novel on the ground follows the flight transcript, and there are all these sort of spooky, mysterious connections between what's going on. But I never met Scott uh, until after the book came out because I um, was I didn't really need him. I wasn't going to go into his head. Um, I did talk to Reen, uh, his first wife, before the book came out, but I decided not to. Uh, try to talk to him, uh, as I remember, because I thought, what if he throws cold water on this, you know, says, I'm interested in the history of this, because the flight was controversial. Mm-hmm. Who fault, so forth. And so I just waited. And then I sent him the book uh, after it was out. And uh, he responded with a beautiful letter. And uh, I then uh, was working at GQ in those days. And I went out and I did a, a feature on him short feature, and that was the first time I met him in the early 90s. So I knew him uh, really for um, about, um, let me see, a little over 20 years, uh, and uh, got to know him quite well, um, uh, separately and together, got to know uh, Reen Carpenter very well, uh, and Chris Stover, his daughter, who wrote with him his own memoirs, she and her husband are very close friends of ours. And um, so um, he was very different from the other seven astronauts. Tom Wolfe captures this a lot. And one of the reasons he does capture it is Tom Wolfe got some of the very best things in the right stuff from Reen Carpenter, who by the time she talked to him was divorced from Scott, but Reen was a pistol. She had a wonderful memory. She was a tremendous storyteller, uh, quite a good writer. and. She uh, recollected things for him in a very lively way. And um, he was always very grateful to her for that. And uh, Scott was more, uh, you know, the others were all interested in the science and the engineering of it. And Scott was, uh, I mean, I, I should narrow that. 
the other, the original seven, they were mostly interested in the engineering of it. Mm -hmm. uh, science insofar as science applied to flight dynamics. They were not interested in what we would call space science. He was, you know, he wanted um, uh, to know uh, what this was going to tell us about the universe. And he, uh, he spent more time looking out the window of the capsule than any of the others did. And uh, he was a quiet, uh, he, he was interested in things. He, he would say things like, I want you to explain the poetry in the New Yorker to me, because I don't, I don't really <laughs> grasp a lot of these poems. And uh, I cannot imagine uh, the other six, any of them, even John Glenn, you know, being interested in those things. And um, he was an aquanaut. He actually had a, probably a more pathbreaking career uh, in underwater exploration mm -hmm. after Project Mercury than um, he did in the space program itself. He had only the one flight. Uh, Christopher Kraft, who was the director of flight, was determined he wouldn't fly again because uh, Kraft uh, thought that, um, uh, you know, Carpenter had malfunctioned rather than the equipment. People still argue about that to this day. But um, but it was a great, um, it, it was a, a great honor to have that friendship. I uh, always enjoyed seeing him. And um, uh, it, it was so, um, you know, key uh, to my life that uh, when he passed in 2013, you know, it really felt like, well, that's my childhood is really over uh, now that I'm in my 60s. And and when Reen passed and Reen had become a good friend, uh, Reen died in uh, 2020, the um, first year of the pandemic. And um, I remember working on her obituary with Kit Seeley who called me up and asked me for quotes and so forth. And, um, and she was really the last of um, that whole cohort. There were the seven astronauts, there were the seven wives, 14, yeah. she was the last of the 14. 